Hello and welcome to another composed and inspired video. Now for this week as you might have seen from the title I will be droning on. Now that's not because of my awful South East England accent and my inability to actually pronounce vowel sounds or anything like that. It's actually because I have bought for myself a DJI Phantom 3 Advanced. Now this is a reasonably expensive drone and it has a gimbaled camera on the front. Um, I've been wanting one of these for a little while and I just thought the theme of different angle would actually give me the ideal opportunity to, to buy one and go out and fly it. So this video, and this is fair warning, will be mostly about the drone, flying the drone and getting pictures with the drone. It won't be a pure photography video. I'm not going to talk about any camera setups because there's very little you can do in terms of that with the drone. So if that doesn't float your boat, then probably a good idea to stop watching now because this video will be mainly about the drone. But if you're interested in drone flying, if you're interested in what the drone can do, if you're interested in aerial photography, or you just want to see how I process and take aerial photos, then stick around and we'll see what we can do. So the format for the video will be, I'm going to go off in a minute and go and have a practice fly because I've not really flown it properly yet. Then I'm going to head down to Brighton tomorrow morning to get some shots first thing when it's nice and quiet on the beach. And when, when I've done that, hopefully we'll be able to come back if I haven't crashed the drone at this point and do some processing. Um, the drone can shoot in um, exposure bracketing mode, so I'm probably going to do a HDR shot whether the drone will stay stable enough in the air to manage that, I just don't know. As I say, I've not flown it properly yet. So, that's the plan, and without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay, so I've come to the local park. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. I'll turn you around so you can see the park and the sun. Lovely. So this is going to be the first attempt at flying the drone other than a little up and down I had with it in the garden yesterday there's just not enough room in the garden to actually fly it properly but here if I slowly turn around you'll see hopefully over my shoulder but this is quite a, a large open area with no trees nearby um, I'm not going to film me actually flying the drone because that'll be about as interesting as watching paint dry particularly if I crash it so I'll get some shots on the drone and then we'll um, see how we go from there Okay, so here we are on a not-so-sunny Brighton Beach. 
and it was raining about 10 minutes ago and if I turn around you can see the i360 somewhere behind me there all the way up there and you can also see how cloudy it is but I'm not really here to shoot that although I might in a minute what I'm actually here to do is to shoot the thing that's over my shoulder which is the West Pier which appears on my stream a number of times so I'm going to try and get the drone over that I've never flown the drone over water so this could be very very interesting and we'll see how we get on Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Um, this is one of the pictures the drone took of directly above the West Pier. Um, this is a really interesting shot from a, um, a kind of the perspective of this is stuff you really do not see from the ground level. You can't see all of the structure that's hiding under the water, even at the lowest tide, all of this fallen down material is just not visible from the beach itself and you can see the where the old walkway went across and some of the spars actually that's a that's a big bit of metal there um, and it's an interesting shot but it's not a very good picture and I'm not sure of the impact it actually has so I'm not going to use this shot what I'm actually going to use is these three bracketed images of the i360 tower with Brighton behind it. Uh, the i360 is a new construction in Brighton. It's got a lot of hate um, from Brighton residents. I would agree. I think it's ugly. Um, it cost a lot of money that could have been used elsewhere. It's the standard complaints that you get with anything that um, a government or council build. The money could have been spent better elsewhere. I forget how much it cost, but it was a lot. Um, the i360 itself, um, it costs £15 for an adult ticket to go on that. And it only gets you to about that far up the mast. So the drone when this shot is probably 60 metres higher up. And because we're slightly further out, you get a much bigger panorama of Brighton. 
laid out in front of you. Also, I've heard rumours, because I've never been on it so I can't say for sure, that there are annoying British Airways adverts that play constantly during the ride and because they're televised adverts and the outside of the i360 itself is glass, you get all reflections of the adverts on the glass and you can't actually see what you're looking at. But anyway, that's by the by. Um, let's get on and process this image. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually correct the barrel distortion of the lens on the um, Phantom. Luckily Lightroom has a preset built in. I'm just going to sync that up. So all three images are the same. Just quickly flip through and check. Yep. And now I'm going to push this into Photomatics Pro. Now that's my preferred HDR editing software. I do have the Google tool from the Nick collection, but I just prefer Photomatics. So I'm going to leave most of the settings as they are. It was drone held rather than handheld, but it certainly wasn't taken on a, a tripod. Um, I'll tick perspective correction. I don't think it will do a lot of good, but I'll tick it anyway. And then I'll just click export and this will take a few seconds to move across to Photomatics, but we'll give it a second just to do it. Now deghosting I'm going to leave on automatic. I think the exposures were taken so quickly that there isn't a lot of movement in the frame. Um, it would certainly only be on the road if there were and I think it would be okay. So I'll just click okay on that and let it merge the images together. Very, very slowly, even on a reasonably powerful computer like mine, it's quite a, a CPU intensive process to actually do this merge. I'm just going to flick through the presets and see which one I like. Um, I'm going to avoid all of the painterly ones because they are awful. They are the very worst of HDR in my opinion. Um, the enhanced two are normally alright, although that's very dark. Let's have a look at interior. I quite like interior, I quite like the fact it preserves the orange nicely and the orange of the pebbles on the beach. So a quick go down, yep, definitely going to avoid surreal and grunge, they are. Just make your eyes bleed. The soft two or four actually are okay, but are a bit soft. This I don't think this image will work at all in mono, no, the tower the i360 itself just doesn't stand out in mono. So I think I'm actually going to go with interior. Probably interior too. And I'm not going to touch anything else in Photomatics. I'm just going to take it straight back into Lightroom and wait for it to re-import, which will take it a second or two, but it will get there eventually. There we go. And obviously the first thing to do now is to correct that lean of the tower and there's a very good tool in Lightroom for doing that, particularly when you've got a nice line as there is down the middle of the 360 and that automatically pulls the image straight. And that looks pretty good to me. That maybe slightly tilting to the right. Maybe there is actually better. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is tackle the sky. Um, as you see, it was very overcast on the day with this bright burst of light over here. Um, I'm going to use a graduated filter with a yellow cast on it. Probably even a bit more yellow than that. Almost pushing to orange, actually. And I'm going to take all the noise out of that sky because it was quite noisy. But at the same time, I'm going to put some dehaze in to really darken down the clouds, make some real drama in the clouds. Just like that. 
maybe a little bit of clarity as well, but I don't want to do too much because we'll start to get some real noise. In fact, I think that's probably too much. There's a, a little bit of a balancing act between noise and clarity here. So I'm going to put some contrast in as well. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then I want to do a, another graduated filter, but not so much light on it as the, on this one. And I just want that to be down here with a little bit of exposure as well, just to really make the foreground pop. And once again, I'm going to put some clarity into it, and again, not too much, and some dehaze. But then also I'm going to put some global dehaze. I really, yeah, as you can tell, I'm addicted to the dehaze tool. I think it's fantastic. But again, only a little bit going in. And I actually really like that. Um, it's a little bit noisy over here. The, the Phantom's camera is noisy, um, even at what is an exceptionally low ISO. Because it's such a small sensor, it's very noisy. Um, but I like the fact that actually I think that is partially not being helped by the fact that that's a band of rain out there. You can kind of see the edges of it. So it's probably still raining over in this bit of the country when I took this picture. As I say, it only recently stopped on the beach. So the rain belt was obviously just moving away over towards the west and the clear sky from the east, which Brighton was just enjoying as I got there. But anyway, I think that's as far as I want to take this image. I don't want to do too much more with it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed the drone flying and the processing. Um, if you've got any comments or feedback, then please do leave them either in the Flickr comments or in the YouTube comments. I'm grateful for any feedback anybody has. Uh, please like, please subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.